Good morning, our viewers. Once more, we are back again to study the Word of God. I'm inviting you to open our Bibles to the book of Exodus, the chapter is 11 and the verse is 7. We are going to see the protection and the loving and caring God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, as we come to study your word, please be among us in your precious holy name I pray. Amen. As we prepare for breakfast and in prepare to go and start this blessed and sunny day, let's open our Bibles to the book of Exodus, the chapter is 11 and the verse is 7. And it says, But against none of the children of Israel shall a dog move its tongue against him, against man or beast, that, the, that you may know that the Lord does not make a difference between the Egyptians and Israel, that you may know that the Lord does make a difference between the Egyptians and the Israel. 29th March is the day today and our title is entitled, our morning devotion today is entitled, not even a dog shall move its tongue. Not even a dog shall move its tongue. Now, Tony in a country, lived in a country in the European, European world. He happened to marry a lady. The relationship was smooth at first and it was running very well. Not until Katie began pregnant and she happened to have a baby boy. Unfortunately, the baby had some problems with a spinal cord. And after the birth of the baby, after some few months of the arrival of this baby, the, no the doctors announced to Katie and Tony that unfortunately the child would never be able to move. We know the backbone, the spinal cord, holds the nerves that serve the lower limbs of the body. So the spinal cord was not able to coordinate. Now, Katie could not face this. Having a lame child was never in her plans. One morning, she woke up and wrote a small note to her husband. She had... The note was stating that she had abandoned her home. She was not ready to bear a child that could not move. And she walked away. Tony was devastated. But as a father, he loved his son so much. He began taking care of his son. And Bob, the son, grew up. Now, we are looking at a loving, caring, and protecting God, a protecting Father, and that's our God. And we see that God protects us in various ways, and that's the way he did to the Israels. He protected them wherever they went. Now, Tony started taking care of his son, Bob, as a single father. But as life moved on, he began getting lonely, and he needed support. So one day, he falls in love with another lady and decides to bring the lady home so that they can have a happy family. On the, upon the arrival of this lady, he noticed, the lady noticed the care and concern and love between father and son. Despite, this child was crippled. And this lady began getting jealousy because she also was requesting or expected love from Tony. So, one day, Tony told this lady that he would be gone. And he decided to leave this new young lady, Bobby's stepmother, into his custody. So, this stepmother decided to take care of this crippled child since Tony the father had left. One day, this lady told this crippled boy that they would be having a trip 
in the forest. And he was saying he's going to give him treats there. Uh, going to, it will be something like a picnic. So this little crippled boy Bob was so happy. Seeing that the stepmother was going to host him with a picnic. And they left with the crippled son. Remember, Bob was moving in a wheelchair. He was totally crippled. He could not move. So this lady, the new stepmother of this son, pushed this wheelchair deep into the forest, very deep into the forest. Now, after pushing him there, she told this young boy that she would be coming back. We're looking at a protective God, a caring father. Despite of this devastating world, the Lord still takes care of his own. After her departure, Bob waited for, her step, for his stepmother. And he was expecting the stepmother to come back. He waited. Unfortunately, the mother never appeared. Now, it was getting darker and darker and the forest was really terrifying. Bob was so helpless. A crippled boy in a wheelchair and he had nowhere to go. Fortunately, after some time, Bob began hearing something. And as this creature came nearby, Bob noticed it was a bear. Bob could not run. He could not scream. He was helpless. He watched as the bear approached him. The bear was huge and big. But to his surprise, he noticed the bear was, the bear acted like he was understanding this boy's situation. To his surprise, the bear came and sat next to Bob in a way of protecting. Remember, this boy is, was left deep down, abandoned in the forest. After some time, looks like, it looked like the bear was protecting this young, helpless boy. Time took up and Bob began to hear some other movements in the forest. Remember, the forest is very quiet. And to his surprise, he saw a very old man who was walking. And Bob screamed to the old man. The old man approached this young man, Bob. At first, he was scared of the scene. A big bear with the young crippled boy. And the bear was harmless. Upon the bear realizing an old man was coming, the bear moved away. And the young old man came into touch with Bob. And took him to his place for safety. After some time, a devastated father, father of Bob was so disappointed. He loved his son and he had put him in custody of a careless and loving creature. Brothers and sisters, our Father in heaven protect us, protects us in a, myriad of, in a myriad of ways, different ways which we may not know. Now, we see the children of Israel were protected in a very miraculous way at different occasions. Now, dogs are very protective animals. They have sharp pointed tongues and their noise is always an alert. Is always an alert? showing or trying to portray this danger or trying to protect people. That is what dogs are. And the, the same work our Lord does. Lord protects us. Now, Israel and Egyptians were living in the same place. However, Egyptians had to suffer lots of different plagues simply because they were disobedient to God. We see that Moses one day, God told him to go back and rescue the children of Israel. Now, upon his arrival to Pharaoh, the children, 
Pharaoh refused. And Moses was trying to tell Pharaoh that he only wanted these people to go and worship their God. But Pharaoh hesitated. <coughs> Excuse me. And <coughs> the more he hesitated, the more God put lots of destruction to the nation of Egypt. I think we know the story, the flies, the frogs, the red water turning off the water, darkness, thunderstorm, death of animals, everything. But Pharaoh hadn't. We see there was a protection he offered to the Israels. Way back, the Egyptians were suffering and were really affected with these plagues or with the destruction. But the Israels were protected. Now, as children of God, God will always protect us. However, there are times when there will not be protection. And this does not mean that God is not in control. When God's children are not protected or happen to have trouble or problems or chaos in this world, God is trying to announce them to improve upon their faith and also to improve upon their trust. Whenever we face challenges, most of us tend to think we have a God that is not loving. But that's a God who's treating us, who's teaching us to have faith towards him. Let us learn to trust God, both in the bad times and good times. At times, God may send protection. In other ways, he may not. But that's a sign that he wants us to grow up, to grow up in faith. Now, the morning devotion is trying to say that live today with a certainty that God will deliver you from any difficulty you are going through. Or do you have a better option instead? The Lord delivered his people, protecting them from general catastrophe. And he's the olden God and he's still the God now. And the redeemed will have the protection and salvation from evil in the end times when one will be taken and the other will be left when will deliver the redeem without expectation so god's children are not always delivered from calamities that affect society in general however when the world needs a testimony when the world when god wants to show the world that he's true and he's really there god at times does specific miracles like he did to the children of israel history says that the children olden olden children of israel used to believe that the more god did miracles that was the true god so god uses these measures in order to tell the world that he exists but let us remember that god is still in control. The Israels were protected and miracles were done and a way to prove to these people that true God exists. So my brethren, when we have problems, let's not forget there is a God in heaven. God may send some help. Occasionally, he may not, simply because he wants our faith to grow up. Thank you for listening. May God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your guidance. Help us learn to put our trust in you. Let's not forget that you are in control. In your precious holy name I pray. Amen.